at Luke Laffer. All right, guys, welcome to the WAN Show. Got another great show for you guys. I'm sure we've done a great show once before at the very least. Oh, wow, they turned around the screen on the camera. That's going to be really distracting. That's yeah, kind of uh, weird. I don't think I can, I don't think I can not look at it. Um, hey, one of the, uh, hey, thanks, David. Well, what's wrong with looking at it? Uh, well, no, if you look at it, then you're going to like look. slightly off? Yeah, it's kind of like if you're having a conversation with someone like this. Like, hi, James. How are you today? But it's also kind of weird if you just look into the lens too much for too long. People get mad at that, too. No. They yelled at me once on a video. Who gets mad about that? Yeah, okay. Well, what happened was I was trying to read the script, and it was the first time that it wasn't a tech link or a tech wiki, and I yeah. actually had to interact with the product I was using. So I was trying to read the teleprompter, which is right in front of the lens, and then I was trying to look away sometimes at the thing and hold it and present it. Yeah. And I was not skilled enough to go from that back to my spot on the scrolling text. Right. And so I kept screwing up. So when the final edit came through and the editor was done putting it all together, all the takes that worked, every take that worked was one where I looked right in the lens without blinking. So the final- Hi everyone, the I am talking about this product. I am not a robot, I am a human. The final video was super penetrating and like <laughs> every, all the comments were like, man, you need to look away once in a while, blink once in a while. I was trying, guys. Okay, I can see that. But WAN shows a more conversational format, so this is one of those things where, uh, sorry guys, we will really get to topics relatively quickly today, but we're, uh, sorry, we, look, the show is having a conversation, okay? So it's one of those things where it's context dependent. So depending on what type of video it is, sometimes it's really important to maintain eye contact the whole time. Like when I was working on the video this week about the Red Megs, that right. was the kind of video where because I am, having a conversation with the person across the table from me who just happens to be a camera, it's important to maintain eye contact because guys, we're trying to have a real chat here. We're trying to demystify something. Especially if it's a more sensitive video, like after your, I don't know, iPhone 10 or something review, when you, you made a subsequent video that was like, look, we kind of screwed up in these ways. I didn't want the video to come out the way it did come out. And you're having like a frank discussion with the audience. Yes it's important to maintain eye contact. It's just, it's a matter of respect. Whereas when you are, like when you're, like if you can imagine something that was like more of a, um, like a narrative type content, content where the characters are interacting with each other and it's like, Hi, James. It sure is a pleasure to be uh, meeting with you here today. <laughs> That's right, Linus. I can't wait to have a show where we actually talk about tech. So it's all, it's all context dependent. So we do have a bunch of great topics for you guys today. Uh, Amazon accidentally sold $13,000 plus camera gear for $100 on Prime Day which wouldn't be much of a WAN show topic. There wouldn't be a lot of discussion there, except that I can actually talk about my experience being on the other end as opposed to the consumer who got a great deal, being the product manager who accidentally priced something for one-tenth of what it was supposed to be. Um, so we'll discuss that. Uh, we've also got Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain interface company, applying to the FDA for human trials. I already have oh, mine. Yeah. He wants to wear that. Oh, yeah. um, Are you saying you want to me to cover up wearing. my, my gr world's greatest dad oh. shirt? Yeah. Look, We've got the world's first and look, second greatest dad. There are here. some people in this office that find that T-shirt offensive. <laughs> <laughs> like if you got one for me too, and Literally, we could both wear it. I didn't. Okay, it was if a we gift. Were, if we were co-world's greatest dad, I might feel slightly less personally attacked. There's only one greatest. <laughs> one goat. And we're also going to cover Facebook's finally getting the fine of five billion dollars. Well, actually, they're not. But that's the announced um, amount. Yeah. It still hasn't gone through, but five billion. All See right. if that number matters. Roll the intro. Roll the intro. <laughs> it's lagging apparently again. I, I don't. I just don't get it. I am. We streamed for half an hour on the test channel. Yeah, please do, because this is getting ridiculous. Um, like we can't be using this exact computer to stream on the test channel and then have it be broken for no apparent reason. That doesn't. Honey, uh, score space. That doesn't make any sense. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, we would strongly recommend hovering, heading over to twitch.tv slash Linus Tech. Can't do that. Um, yes, I can. <laughs> I can do that. If, I, if YouTube can't figure out their live streaming, then people can go watch on Twitch. The stream's fine over there. Uh, so we're multi-streaming. We did a half an hour long test on our other channel, and it was fine. So honestly, I don't know what to tell you guys. We have no idea what the problem is, but it's clearly not our internet. 
Uh, clearly not our restreaming service because that's working to Twitch on this one and to our test YouTube channel. Um, and so, yeah, we don't know. We've got the settings identical between them. Um, it's apparently only some people. So there's people in chat that are saying there's no lag. So all I can tell you guys is if you are experiencing lag, twitch.tv slash Linus Tech. Um, we're also having some lag issues on Floatplane. Those are unrelated. Those are Floatplane related. We have to change from uh, Nimble Video Streamer to a different one because basically there's too many of you now and it's <laughs> we have to make something new. So um, thanks so much for your support is uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty much what I'm what Tell I'm your buying. friends, but get them to trickle in. Yeah. <laughs> um, Luke's going to have some really cool float plane news next week. But for now, I think the best thing that we can do is uh, jump right into our highlight topic for the week, which is, of course, the pricing errors on Amazon's Prime Day. Now, this isn't something you noticed when you guys were doing your Prime Day stream. No, it wasn't. Um, but so did, you, did you cover any camera gear? No, we didn't. So this was posted by RC Mayel. I think is how I pronounce it. I'd like to just, the hell? just for the record, yeah. you have one of the, my most hated names on the forum. I do? No, this guy, oh. this person. I was like, it's just my name. I'm doing the WAN why, doc. Why can't you stop, why won't you stop attacking me? <laughs> you're a you're a bad dad. Hey, I you just, have a crap name. You're not a bad dad. You're just not the world's greatest anymore. <laughs> All I've right, been so doing sorry. this for three weeks now. You hate RC <laughs> Mayhill. <laughs> I've been doing the WAN doc for like a year and a half or something like that or maybe even two years. And this person posts all the time, and I still have right. to spell and like look and spell the name. It just makes no sense in my mind. I can't remember how to spell it ever. So thanks, dude. Maybe it's RC May HL. You know, like maybe we're missing something here. Anyway, no, do you wanna, wanna run us through what happened? So on Prime Day, some users, not everybody, but some people saw weird prices for lots of different camera gear. So and this is on the same item. Like two different people would see a different price for the same item? They all saw the same price, yeah. but it wasn't the intended price. Got it. So okay. it started out on one item in particular, and then people noticed that it was actually on lots of different items. And it yeah. was always, always the price of $94.48. Right. And then, uh, so there's a forum that a lot of these like deal seekers use called Slick Deals. Slick Deals has been around forever, actually. You can get slick deals over there. The slickest. You know what's funny? I'm going to totally derail you here because I'm rude like that. Um, we had thought about creating... You know how Linus Tech Tips doesn't have an award program? Like, we don't have like a... Like a loyalty program. No, 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 no not, a re not a rewards program. We don't have an award program. Like, when we review something, oh, yeah. we won't be like... Four and a half stars out of five, recommend to buy. And like, we don't have like a little badge designed for that. I, I just, I don't know. It's always felt kind of silly to me and we don't do it. But we had considered doing one at one point just because we had the best possible names for what the awards would be. So Luke and I were each going to have separate ones. And um, it was going to be... I can already imagine. There was going to be this list, okay? Linus's likes with like a thumbs up, like modeled after a Facebook style thing. And then Slick's deals. Oh, that's pretty good. So we figured, like, okay, if we were going to have an award program, it would have to be cringy like that. But then we just kind of never got it off the ground. Anyway, carry on. Yes, yeah, Slick Deals. So it's a website. Yeah, they posted deals. on the forum there, and then it kind of spread, and lots of people got in on it. Apparently, a lot of people made orders, and some people's orders have been fulfilled. So some Ooh. people realized that they are getting Slick Deals and tried to make the best of it. Like, there was this one guy, he bought, like, $10,000 worth of stuff for... $900 worth of real money. And then uh, wow. some of it got got actually delivered to him. But what happened was Amazon itself, with a completely separate system, flagged his credit card because they thought someone was, was using it maliciously. Like just, you've never bought 10 cameras before, so they shut it down. So only some of the stuff in his cart oh, are, are I think maybe, maybe he did one order and then he made a new cart and then that one went, didn't get fulfilled. So he got kind of stymied for a different reason, but. Yeah, some people got off with a ton of sweet gear. So there's things wow. like Sony A6000 kits, uh, A6500s, 10 to 18 millimeter bundle, um, a $2,000 Sony A7 body, Sony A9, Holy all of this crap. stuff. Apparently there was like a $13,000 big, one of those giant lenses that people use to zoom in on birds. All of this stuff for like $94. Holy crap. I mean, to be clear, the, the person talking about the $13,000 lens wrote that um, 
Oh no, another member wrote regarding their Canon EF. Oh no, this is 800 millimeter, yep. Uh, waiting for the cancellation, but that's like 99% off. Um, others reported that they successfully price matched gear at retailers like Best Buy that's and Walmart. That's crazy. So, that is crazy, because I have seen other times where on, I think it was um, like a Boxing Day thing, yep. where someone had a crazy deal and then the other local retailers just said, no, we're not doing it, it's too crazy. Yep. They wouldn't order, they wouldn't match it even though it was their policy. So going back to my days uh, as a product manager at an online retailer, um, one of my one of my big mistakes um, early on in my career as a product manager was actually on a Mountain Mods case. I remember it pretty well. Um, and I was pretty new to the product management team. I only had basically the only product lines that I was allowed to handle were the ones that were not really worth anyone else's time. Like they were either very high touch, um, so very, very time consuming with a lot of like nitpicky, stupid crap, or very low margin, or like completely dead lines that someone else had like just abandoned and just didn't feel like dealing with anymore. So they just kind of got shed over to me. That's how you get uh, baptized in fire. Pretty much. Like I started out trying to make a name for myself uh, with water cooling and like weird fringe vendors and Mountain Mods was one of them. So here, I'm just gonna switch over to my screen here. So Mountain Mods actually still exists and it's really funny that Case Labs made so much noise about how their designs got ripped off by Thermaltake because to my knowledge, now I could be wrong, correct me in the chat, but as far as I know, Mountain Mods has been around a heck of a lot longer than Case Labs, and they are the original cube case. I feel like if there's some kind of like tech, like the Force, like Star Wars Force, you can sense all the keyboards around the world clacking right now to try to investigate this for us. Someone's gonna have an answer. I know, right? So Mountain Mods, um, it was one of their Ascension cases, I think. Uh, basically, they're like kind of a modular case maker. Um, and the big problem for them was that their shipping prices into Canada sucked donkey balls. So any Canadians that wanted to buy a Mountain Mods case couldn't really get one at a reasonable price because they're already super expensive because they're uh, made in the US still, to my knowledge, including the actual metal fabrication and powder coating. Um, it looks heavy. And they are heavily um, kind of customizable. They're actually not that heavy, they're aluminum. Um, so they're heavily customizable. Uh, they're big and they ship pre-assembled, so they're like freaking huge. And all the accessories are like super expensive and there's all these different options. Um, and shipping cross-border was a little bit tougher back then. Man, their site still sucks. Okay, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> let's just grab like a U2. U2 UFO is kind of like their OG case. It's changed a lot over the years, but I'm willing to bet the pictures on here are from like the Enforce 2 days. Like it really wouldn't surprise me. Look how slow this freaking site is. Though you guys might be love hugging it right now. Um, what does that mean? Love hugging it? Yeah. Like I bring it up and then everyone like goes to their site just to like oh. check it out. And it's not used to that kind of traffic because they're this super weird little niche vendor. Um, so anyway, yeah, these are like 360 to $400 cases. And as soon as you start adding some accessories, like, you know, uh, a dual power supply mount or like a fancy grill for your radiator or whatever the case may be, they get really expensive. And um, part of the other problem with them is that because they're highly customizable, so when you click on one of the cases, you'll have all these different options for like different motherboard trays and uh, different drive mounts and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, it was a really, really, I'm finally bringing it back. It was Thank a you. really challenging line for me to manage because unlike a Corsair case, where it's like, this is a 580X. It comes with all the things a 580X comes with and is compatible with the things a 580X is compatible with. I had to kind of pre-make the decision oh, yeah. for our customers, what color, what finish of that color, what mounting options in order to kind of try to have something that is pre-configured in our warehouse that makes sense. And if I made a bad gamble, like if I decided that we wanted UV orange acrylic windows, then if, if we were stuck with dead stock of that, 
I had to go rip all those UV orange ones, order some clear ones, put them on myself. Like no one was gonna help me with this crap because they all thought it was a total waste of time. Ultimately, carrying Mountain Mods was actually a total waste of time. We didn't end up making a ton of money on it, but uh, you know, we tried. We Sorry, tried. Mountain Mods. And they're, they're cool guys. Like just to be clear, um, I actually had Mountain Mods, um, even after we weren't really buying cases from them anymore, I had them powder coat my case for my personal rig because I just absolutely love their powder coat finish. It's just, it's fantastic. Was that available to everybody? You could just send yours in and they would finish it and send it back? I have no idea. They did it for you. They did it for me though. Nice. <laughs> hey, I'm, 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 all about, I'm all about working the angles, man. You know that. <laughs> I was just like, hey, so uh, if I like disassemble, I don't like your cases that much. <laughs> I like my case, but I really like your paint finish. Um, can I send it to you? And they did it for me. It looks beautiful to this day. I actually still have that case in mothballs. Wow. Uh, in case I ever don't have like a rack mounted gaming machine, I'll probably go back to it. Now, can you speak to the other side of this issue in terms of when we see this and, and the, the, the spin that all these articles have is that this was a cool freak occurrence where you could get this stuff super cheap, which is amazing for anyone right. involved who got to be there and, and got to buy stuff super cheap and anyone who missed out is super regretful. Okay. But no one talks about the perspective of the retailer who's like, Man, so, we just lost a lot of money. This was a $500 case, Canadian, our cost. Because um, the US dollar was actually quite a bit stronger against the Canadian dollar at that point in time. So what happened was I wanted to price it, and I think I was even trying to blow them out. Like I was trying to get rid of them. Um, so I had them at I think $499.99 or something like that. So you're anyway, just trying to break even and liquidate these. Things. I'm just trying to flip them. Um, so. I accidentally put a decimal in the wrong place. Now, it's funny, we actually ended up developing a system later on down the line that would highlight red, uh, highlight yellow and then highlight red. Anything that was marked uh, 10 or 20, like some, some percentage. I think it was yellow if it was below cost and then red mm -hmm. if it was significantly below our cost. So if cost. it's abnormal, it can fly in. So, it'll, so that you'll visually see it on your sheet and you can go do a manual double check. But that system didn't exist up until that time. Because apparently- <laughs> They called it the Linus system. Yeah, everyone else who had worked there before that just never made boneheaded entry errors. Um, but anyway, I accidentally entered uh, 49.999. Mm -hmm. And the system did manage to auto-correct that I had an extra it decimal. It truncated the extra nine and then it was 50 bucks. And it was 50 bucks for a $500 case. Now, there were, okay, because it was such a weird niche item, like if we had accidentally priced a hard drive or a yeah. CPU or something or like that. a high volume, a high, high demand. A high volume item at 10% of the price we would have noticed immediately because like our servers would have gone down. Oh no. You know, we would have had 10,000 people on the site trying to order that friggin' thing. So you're saying this was a silent killer and this, no one noticed for weeks. No, no, well, we noticed the next day because every order at NCIX at that time was actually like the, the credit card processing was manually reviewed by a team of people. Um, so they went through, brought it to the CEO, instead of coming and talking to me about it, Thanks, Dr. No, you know who you are. Um, brought it straight to the CEO instead of coming and talking to me about it first and was like, hey, what's up with this? We're losing uh, $450 an order on, on this item. What, is this, does this seem like sound business to you? Oh, so, man. Um, I get, so, so here's kind of the dark, you know, the other side of this. So I get called into the president's office. I am a very junior product manager at this point. Um, I probably haven't made $5,000 for the company <laughs> at this point, and we've got 10 orders. Oh, really? Now, it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been because someone actually had seen it the night before and pulled it out of the sale. Um, and I don't even know if we had 10 units in stock, but basically it was, it was five grand, which to me, to a lot of people, I think is a lot of money, right? So, $5,000, a lot of money? Sure. Um, and he kind of, he looks like, sit down. I was like, oh boy. And he goes, so here's what, here's the situation. What are we going to do about this? And I was like, why are you asking me? I don't know. <laughs> what are we gonna do about this? 
And I was like, I, 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 I'll call them and I'll, I'll explain. I'm sorry, we, we can't do that, uh, our bad. And he's like, no, we're going to honor it. We're going to eat it this time. But that's your training budget for the year. Don't do it again. And I kind of went, <laughs> so. So even if you didn't have 10 in stock, say you had seven in stock. Yeah. You ordered the other three and fulfilled them? Because uh, those ones could have been easily canceled. If I recall correctly, the ones we didn't have in stock, we canceled the orders, but the ones that we did have in stock, we ate it. Yeah. So I think we had close to however many we sold. Um, and apparently this gear was being sold and shipped by Amazon. So it actually would have been Amazon and eating this and an Amazon employee getting the talk like that you had. So I guess here is, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people talk about these kinds of pricing errors. Um, from a very, um, I would say selfish perspective, they'll say, well, yeah, maybe you shouldn't have made that mistake then. Um, to which I would respond, okay, um, what's your job? Are you a, uh, I don't know, are you a, a, a construction worker? Are you a, a, a drywaller? Are you a, a chef? Are you a, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Um, if you were to make a mistake that's that easy to make, if you were to put a nail into the wrong spot, remember, you are just a cog in the machine. I'm not saying that you run the company because in our case, the CEO was in a position to make a decision like, let's lose $5,000 today, you know? So you're just a cog in the machine. If you were to put a nail in the wrong spot, three inches to the right, um, should you just lose $5,000? I'm talking about the triviality of the error that was made and the total consequences. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on the one hand, yes, advertising a false price is bad and actually in many cases illegal. But in this case, um, I would argue that in some ways the consumer, knowing that that price is obviously not correct and predatorially ordering something is not in the right either. Even though their action is completely legal, I would say it is not really ethical. Sure, but there's yeah. Everyone knows that uh, you know everyone throws around this term of late late stage capitalism. Capitalism is great; it's the most successful distribution like wealth distribution system we've ever invented. But there are some dark sides of it that result in oligopolies and and all sorts of other things and and siloing of wealth and stuff like that. And I think because those dark sides of capitalism exist, when things like this happen in favor of consumer, I'm kind of just like, yeah, today it worked for me. Yeah. Do two wrongs make a right? I mean, that becomes, I think, a bigger debate at a certain point. Do you think there's anyone who uh, benefited from this sale who would go, ah, you know what? Cancel the order. This, I don't deserve yeah. this $5,000 camera. Well, I think they would say, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, okay. I think it takes a particular type of person to go and like, uh, again, you know, when I talk about being predatory, I'm not talking about ordering the $500 camera for $100. That's maybe believable. You know, you might not even look that closely at it. You might think it's it's a it's a B stock one. But the thirteen thousand dollar lens for ninety four dollars. Yeah, or or going and ordering, placing six or seven separate orders, trying to get as many of them as you can. Like ultimately, that is. It's not stealing because someone is voluntarily giving it to you, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna say something super controversial, and I'm gonna say by the same logic, you know, the, the settlers here in North America didn't steal land from the Native Americans then, because they, in many cases, gave it up voluntarily, not realizing or understanding what the deal they were making was. Like, I would make the argument that that, that retailer or that provider of product didn't know that that was what was happening, and that's clearly predatory. Well, it's a little different because this is probably an, an error, but as a parent, yes. if you found out that your kid got, was one such person, they got the $13,000 lens for Oh, I'd make them return it. 
You would make you would have a Absolutely. talk with you and make them yeah. return it. Yeah. Interesting. Sucks to be your kids. <laughs> Is there a line where like, okay, if they get the five hundred dollar one for a hundred dollars? Yes. That's kind of justifiable. Yeah, to me, it's believable. If they get one that's like two thousand dollars for a hundred dollars, you're making them return it. But if they get something extreme that you're like, okay, don't tell anybody. That's crazy. Like you get, you just keep it. Like if they find a duffel bag of like a billion dollars. Several dollar truck. If they find like a duffel bag of money that's like three million dollars in it, you're like, okay, just don't tell anybody. Let's just move. <sighs> See, that's the thing. Okay, it's still unethical. But, but if I found a duffel it. bag of money on the street, I've actually I've actually thought about this. I have theory crafted this for myself. <laughs> if I found a duffel bag of money on the street, I'm going to use an arbitrary number. But let's say it has five million dollars in it, and I'm talking Canadian rupees. So it's not like you know what? No. Let's say five million US. Okay, five million US dollars. Now my first instinct. Wait a second. Yeah. Can we just do it, then you have to fence US dollars to Canadian and stuff. Can we just make it whatever your home currency is? You find a bunch of money. Okay, fine. You find five million US dollars equivalent in your home currency. So for us that's about six and a half million dollars. Okay? We good? Sure. All right, we can go forward Thank you. now. Thank You're you welcome. very much. So okay, I find five million dollars in a bag. Now my first instinct is actually fear. Yeah, sure. Why is this here? Who's watching it? Um, you know, I, I open it because I'm like, you know, let's say I open it because I'm earnestly trying to return it to the owner, right? And I open it and I'm like, holy crap, it's full of money. Um, there's no identifying information in it whatsoever, right? So you are supposed to turn it into the police. That's what you're supposed to do. Is that a law? I believe so, yes. Um, you have to give it to them to give whoever lost it some reasonable amount of time to claim it. And then after that, I believe theoretically it's supposed to be forfeited back to you, but I think in the cases of very valuable or very large sums of cash, that might not necessarily be the case. Um, and it might just go to the crown. Well, you're, you, so, can be re you can be relatively sure that it's laundered money or dirty money anyway. You can be relatively sure of that, yes. So with that in mind, even though it's unethical, I've, I thought about this, actually. <laughs> like on a plane ride? I'm pretty sure my course of action, I, I was like lying awake one night, I couldn't sleep. And I was like, I don't remember why it came up, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. The point is, I'm pretty sure this is what I'd do. I would take it home and I would bury it somewhere. Just, I would just bury it. And I would wait for some very long period of time. If someone came looking for it, I'd wanna have it all because I don't know who's showing up for it. Could be cops, could be drug dealers, could be human traffickers, no idea. But whoever they are, I, I want some kind of credible, plausible deniability story about how I was, I was keeping it safe and trying to get in touch with whoever owned it. Here you go, go away, please never talk to me again. You probably get beat up, but they might But they, they might, might not let kill you live. Me. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. So, after some period of time, let's say 18 months, two years, I'd keep it. I'd keep it. It would be unethical, and I would know it's unethical, but given who the victim was, we're not talking some random blue collar worker who's just trying to do their job. We're talking probably drug dealers and human traffickers or whatever. We're talking $5 million in a duffel bag. There's no legitimate reason for that to exist. Mm. Um, given who the victim is, it's good. I don't care. It's a good plan. I like it. I don't know that I would go to my house first. I might just drive around. I don't know. Okay, you know what? Actually, that's. I'm not going to be like, oh, now that you say that, yes, I did think of that. I actually did. I had considered that. <laughs> I would, yeah. would want to make sure I didn't have a tail. Uh, but, uh, but I would end up at my house eventually, and I would bury it at my house. Would you pick yeah. it up right away, or would you just go and sit down at a bench with an eye shot? Oh, I would pick it up it? right away. I'd pick it up right away for sure. But then what I would do is I would pick it up right away and I would wait nearby with it. Mm. So that way, if someone were to show up and I'd be like sitting on my phone or something, if someone were to show up, I'd be like, oh yeah, I totally noticed that this was very weird. And I was looking in the news to see if like who it might go back to. Yeah. And I was, I was about to call the police. Here you go. We're super cool, right? Bye. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I would pretend that I was at least making nah, some so kind of an naive. effort. Yeah. Just, so, just don't kill me. Playing dumb. Yeah, just don't kill me. Playing dumb is not a bad bet. 
Well, how did we get on this if topic? You, if you got one of those cameras, I say keep it. You're a good person. I remember when I was in, in university, yeah. when terabyte hard drives were first coming out, there was an error like that. I forget what company it was, but they were going for like 60 bucks or something like that, which was a steal at the time. And yeah. I regretted not being able to cash in on it. Okay. But remember too, that's, that's 60 bucks. Like it's somewhat credible. And besides, there's a difference between ordering one and ordering 20. So actually- Yeah, the, one's smarter. So <laughs> pricing errors would happen fairly often at NCIX. And I can tell you right now, if you're the guy that orders one, we were far more likely to let it go. And if yeah. you were the guy that orders 10, we were far more likely to tell you to go cram it up your butt. Mm. You get nothing. Because the thing that you gotta understand is in any case like this, it's always a judgment call. And they're gonna make a decision case by case basis. How much was this our fault? How much is our total overall loss? Um, how much of a complete a-hole is this particular individual being about it? Like if someone came to us and was like threatening to- Am I, am I supposed to drink out of this? You can is if you want, it's is yours. Is it good? Well, it's not mine. Oh, it's, it's brand new. Oh yeah, right. Uh, we're launching a new. Oh, there's uh, ice in here check too. Check it out. New water bottle. There's ice in this. Yeah. They it's, don't come with ice. No, they don't come with ice. They don't come with bath water either, thankfully. So this <laughs> is the new limited edition. I don't know. We might make more of them. You never know. But we didn't do that many of them. But this is the Stealth Linus Tech Tips water bottle. So gone is the orange logo. In is the matte black logo. Well, it's actually kind of a glossy black, but the whole thing's. Oh, this is the design that I was like, yeah, do this one. Yeah. Sweet. So we decided to do both. Um, That's but good. we did the orange one first, and then we just had them. The orange ones are selling so well that we were like, okay, let's do more orange ones. And what the hey, let's do a stealth one too. So lttstore.com, you guys are going to want to check that out. It's the same price as the other one. I right? like stealth. Yeah. And there's a deal. Oh, right. And the there's a bundle. deal. bundle. I forgot about that. Okay. So this week is the Stealth Bundle. I don't have to actually give them an offer code, do I, it's Nick? It's automatically applied. Automatically applied. So all you gotta do is scroll right past the underwear. Or oh, don't, yeah. and buy that too. Yeah, or buy that too. Um, <laughs> and go ahead and add to the cart the Stealth hoodie in your size of choice. God damn it, how cute is Colton? Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the Stealth water bottle. Which we'll have pictures later. Which we'll have pictures shortly, but it looks like this. You guys saw it. And the LTT hat in, in black. black. Which I love. And bippity boppity. Well, bippity boppity bundle. You Boom. You get the hat for free. So there's no indication that this bundle exists until you make it yourself in your you cart. You have to be here to know about it. You might call it oh. a stealth bundle. Oh. Oh. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. But yeah, it's automatically applied to your cart. You yeah, so it'll automatically apply to your cart. So, guys, oh, what the heck? Dang it. You guys should try to put other things in your cart and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> you never know. Merch might just show up at your house. My stupid kids, they play with my, they play with the strings on my hoods. Mm. <laughs> they pull them out. See, even though it's, no, there's a knot in it, so it's not gonna come out easily, but they all, oh. they're always screwing around See, with it. See, we them. have preventative measures for this. I know. We thought of this in the design. But they like- Your kids foiled you. Work hard at it. I don't have a red hat. I only have the black ones. So this yeah, is pretty nice. Forget it. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's the hoodie that I'm wearing right now, which can be configured with the, uh, the strings even, but you know, your mileage may vary on that. So this one with the phone pocket and the- Does uh, that have a water bottle pocket? Does not have a water bottle. Where the heck's my phone? I don't know where my phone is. I mean, yeah, you could put it. It does bottle. have a water bottle pocket. Yeah, so it's got the phone pocket. I wouldn't actually recommend putting a water bottle on it. That'll stretch it. Um, this is my hoodie. Don't screw with my hoodie. So it's this one. It's the black on black hat, and it's the black on black water bottle. Add all of those to your cart, and you will get $20 off, which is basically the price of the hat. And uh, so it's kind of like getting a free hat. It's so like unusual that I love this hat because usually when I try on a hat, I, for some reason, I don't know if it's my head shape or whatever, but I get these weird creases like right here and here. Yeah. These ones, they're just perfect. Great for covering up your greasy hair, which is uh, most of the week. My not that bad today. I most think. of the week for I'm, me. I'm going, I'm going with my hair today. I'm not much of a hat guy every day, but um, I burn in about eight minutes outside. Oh, yeah. So I actually do wear it like a When I wear a, that hat and a hoodie, my wife says that I look like I'm from Abbotsford. From Abbotsford. What does that even mean? 
Well, as opposed to Vancouver, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Neuralink. Hey, what's this oh. other shirt you have on? Oh, right, LTX. Okay, are we doing sponsors? Let's do sponsors. You know what? I thought Let's we were. Let's do sponsors now. LTX 2019, baby. It's going to be flipping sick. This is my staff shirt. Woo! I got staff. Really excited. I mean, look, if we're pimping everything, I might as well just oh be like, yeah, yeah. We've got the underwear now, too. Yeah! Ooh. I actually got our first customer feedback on the underwear already. Oh, yeah? Yeah, someone tagged me in a status update on the forum. Crotch is too tight. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, James. Um, yeah, they, they messaged me on the forum. They were like, wow, I can't believe I got it so fast. Because oh, we great. launched it a couple days ago. They got it yesterday. So they got it basically immediately. Where and, were they located? Um, they were like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not sure. Oh. And I couldn't share that information anyway, but um, I guess I could if it was vague enough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where like they're in located. In Canada, in the US. No idea. Hmm. But they got it already, and they're ordering two more. Two more packs. Really? They're like, yeah, I, I love it. That's saying a lot. Yeah. Having nine pairs of underwear, that's like gonna be, probably going to be half of this person's whole repertoire of underwear. Yeah, I mean, if they do weekly laundry, maybe their whole one. Um, and uh, yeah, they were just like, yeah, I ordered one as a test, and I'm ordering two more. They're they're freaking awesome. Love them. And that's saying a lot, especially when you consider that they're fifty dollar, fifty dollars US for three packs, or excuse me, for three pairs. That's not which is not exorbitant. It well, okay, depends it's US, what you're used it's US to. dollars. There are lots. In, speaking in Canadian dollars, um, which I feel like buying power wise is probably the same. Like if you're in the US and you buy. Twenty dollar underwear it probably hurts you the same as twenty dollar underwear in the in Canada. Yeah. Um, if you find good underwear that's twenty two dollars, that's like a good deal. Because there's a lot of boxers that think they should be worth thirty five dollars. It depends what you're used to. Because if you're like a Lululemon shopper, oh yeah, my whole drawer. Then before the line of yeah, twenty two dollar underwear probably doesn't shock you. Whereas the Lululemon ones are twenty two dollars or twenty five dollars. That's why they're so wicked. And then, but if you're a Hanes shopper, yeah, and you buy, you know, a thirty pack of underwear for ten bucks at like, you know, you Costco can't get or whatever. That. Look, I'm, I, it, I'm, even the cheap rounds are more. I'm exaggerating. Yeah, I'm exaggerating. I'm just saying, if you buy like, you know, uh, uh, Acme, Acme, you know, palette of underwear. What, what are they actually? They're like six dollars a pair. I have no idea. The la I have, the last time I bought underwear was. My wife buys my underwear. I don't. I don't know how much underwear costs. Uh, all I know is what I did in terms of like price comparison for these, and the material quality is more comparable to your twenty-five to thirty-five dollar per pair underwear, and our pricing is more like uh, fifteen, yeah, sixteen dollars a pair, sixteen and a half dollars a pair. So I feel like yes, they're expensive, but also they're not unreasonable, and it's part of it is just. <laughs> The brand that we're trying to build for the merch is like, look, it's unapologi it's unapologetically not cheap, but it's also not basic. Like, it's nice. You'll like it. Um, I'm trying okay, to get underwear. How much does underwear I cost? I typed in underwear on Costco.com, and the first out. thing that comes oh. up is depends. Your screen's not uh, sharing with me for some reason. Oh, wait, you're using your laptop instead of the second stream laptop. I didn't even know that that laptop, that the second stream laptop can share. Oh, yeah, it can. Okay, um, here we go. $15. For champion men's boxer briefs, five pack. Okay, so that's so three three dollars a pair. So that's really cheap. That's cheap. We are literally five to six times the price of that. Wow, that train is really loud when the bay's open, isn't it? That is uh, that is fantastic. That's your underwear, rolling out to a mailbox near you. Do people like the underwear colors? Are there any colors that uh, people would like to see? Do we know that yet? I have. Hit us no up in the idea. chat. Yeah, we're waiting to hear back from people. People are complaining about the leg, guys. We got we got nothing to do to help you. Twitch.tv/slash Linus Tech. Our stream is fine. YouTube is dropping all the frames. Oh. We don't know what to tell you guys. We've got to make some pink on pink underwear at some point. We should use holiday underwear, Christmas pattern. Look, That'd be awesome. The minimum order quantities for underwear are really high. Really? Yeah. So doing just like a whole bunch of different patterns and stuff is maybe not uh, on the roadmap okay. anytime soon. We got to do Christmas. We'll uh, see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. The thing, nice thing about Christmas undies is you can, if you have leftover product, just put it in the attic for a year and bring it out next year. Um, so guys, a few more things. Um, 
LTX. It is next Saturday and Sunday. Not this, like tomorrow Saturday, next Saturday and Sunday. There's gonna be 3,000 plus people a day. It's gonna be freaking awesome. It's gonna There's be insane. There's gonna be almost 600 people at the BYOC land. We've got tons of stuff to do. I'm gonna bring up the map for anyone who's not sure if they should attend or not. So many YouTubers. Here it is. There are so many creators there. How many, like 25? Um, LTX, Twitter. There's a lot. I'm in charge of the main stage. We got panels going all day with all sorts of different creators. Some you know, some you may not know, oh. and you want to know. Oh, attendee info. We yeah, we we showed it. So here's our featured creators: Linus Tech Tips, Austin Evans, Jay's Two Cents, Strange Parts, Hardware Canucks, Paul's Hardware, Gamers Nexus, Barnacle, Snazzy Q, Low Spec Gamer, Science Studio, Tech Deals, Level One Techs, Oz Talks Hardware, Christopher Yee, Der Bauer, Epos Vox, Nerd on a Budget, Act. Cuckoo, Coalition Gaming, Luna Lyric, David ML, Pedro from PCMR subreddit, of all things. Vote for Pedro. Stacy Roy and Steve Aurelian. I think that's actually exactly 25. Nice. We went all freaking out. So if you want to meet any of those people, or like realistically, most of them, yeah. come to LEX. And not even meet, come, but like hang out. Yep, it's should be two great. days. You could probably talk to each of those people for a solid 10 minutes. Well, I don't want to make commitments on oh, that. Oh, I get, okay. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about past LTX. Yeah, you can talk to James this for ten gonna, minutes if you want. <laughs> I'm busy, man. You can come to the main stage area and heckle me. <laughs> I'll yell at you. Yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be great, guys. Uh, it's gonna be a blast. There's still some tickets available. Um, not many. Get out here, though. Yeah. You can Airbnb um, at my place. We'll have LTT store merch for sale, uh, 30 exclusive items up for silent auction with proceeds going to Extra Life. Um, Memory Express will be there selling gear on site. So if you need a spare part or you want to buy a CPU and delit it in the CPU delitting booth, uh, that'll be sick. VRRC Cars is going to be sick. Jake's got four cars up and running. And instead of doing a race, we're actually doing uh, more like a first person uh, like treasure hunt. So you have to go around and search for Shit. clues. Is this even is that even known? I don't think so. Quiet. Oh. Shh. <laughs> also, the main stage schedule will be here soon, um, and so we'll be sharing that. We're so. gonna play Family Feud. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's gonna be so, so sweet. Wait, am I allowed to show this? Oh yeah, I can just show this. Cool. There you go, guys. Uh, so there, we're gonna have a bunch of panels, PC do's and don'ts with Hardware Canucks, Level One Techs, and Jake. Uh, what, what the what the hell is going on? What? <clears throat> this better be a new merch item. It's not gonna work. Uh. <laughs> oh, he just nailed the shelf. Uh, can I help you guys? Is oh, this a? Is this to do with LTX? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, wearing, just come, come over here. Yeah, I mean, you got, you can't have us like react to this and not show people what's going it's on. It's B-roll. This is Linus Media Group. What bunny roll. Yeah. Hey. Bunny roll indeed. Yeah, it's bunny roll. Yeah. Show show them your tails. Uh, no, this isn't this isn't that kind of program. Yeah. Uh, well, Nick thinks Nick's it is. Nick is cute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> David's over there wearing nothing but a trench coat. Yeah, I gotta he's, go. He's wearing a uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a gabardine. A flasher flasher coat. Exhibitionist I don't know, costume. I don't know what these guys are Col doing. Colton doesn't even have a tail. That's weak. Um. Uh, you don't sound stoked for Family Feud. That's gonna be so sweet. I have never watched Family Feud, and I don't quite know what it is. Okay. So that's the survey says. Sure. We did a survey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna have best processor to pick in 2019 with Austin Evans, Jay's Two Cent, and our very own Anthony. Uh, we're gonna have running a YouTube business, the early years. I'll be up there, Strange Parts, Epos Vox, um, Q&A with LMG, part one creative and part two business. We'll have different members of our team chatting. We're gonna do PC versus Mac with Luke, Snazzy Labs, and Gamers Nexus, that'll be fun. Budget versus performance with Linus Tech Tips, Tech Deals, and Pedro from PCMR. It's gonna be freaking awesome, guys. Don't miss it if you don't absolutely have to. You can catch the panels, by the way, um, if you just tune in on Floatplane. So we're gonna have those available on Floatplane. Um, also, float plane pricing for Linus Tech Tips will be going up soon. We finally got our pricing tiers figured out, so it's gonna go up to five bucks. However, we are going to grandfather or grandmother, um, equal grand person. Equality, grand person. We're gonna grand person in um, anyone who is already subscribed. So you're gonna want to get over there pretty quick. So should I subscribe now? We've got a is number. Is it free forever for me? I don't even have an account. I don't know how staff accounts work, to be honest with you. 
Um, yeah. Can we? Can we do? Oh yeah, actual sponsor stuff. Yeah, Holy. actual sponsor stuff. Holy cow! Uh, new sponsor, bench. Not that bench. Different bench. What bench are you talking about? Be- uh, like, like the 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 apparel brand. The, like bench. Yeah, like, like on that the... bench. It's not them. No, no, no. Oh. A bench allows you to run your business and let Bench do your bookkeeping. They're the ah. largest North American online bookkeeping service, and they're partnered with a dedicated team of bookkeepers. You can automatically import your transactions from your bank and merchant processors. They'll do accurate end-of-month financial statements for your business. They'll tra- you can track your financials through the Bench app, available on your iPhone or web browser, and they've got unlimited support at any time. Visual reports allow you to quickly see how your business is performing, and at the end of the year, you'll get a financial package that allows you to easily complete your taxes accurately. The bottom line is when small business owners outsource their bookkeeping to Bench, they get more time to focus on running their business. So check them out at lmg.gg slash bench and you can get 20% off your first six months of bookkeeping. And you can use that money to shop online with Honey. Honey. Join Honey.com slash Linus. Honey is the free shopping tool that finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online at supported sites like, you might have heard of them, Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart. So many random ones, too. And more. Yeah, just tons of When we did the catalog ones. for our Banff trip and the photo book, yeah. I got like a third of the price off. Really? I- I've saved so much money. I barely internet shop. It actually works. So Honey gets a small commission from the sites where Honey saves you money. It's free to install and installs in just two clicks. So it's free forever. Um, There you go. There's a note in here about like specific people who work here who have saved money. You're not in there, but you have too. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Linus. Finally, with all that cool stuff that you buy with Honey, if you want to like make an online store or something, Use Squarespace. Squarespace's award-winning templates allow you to build a beautiful website without the hassle. Their all-in-one platform makes it easy to get up and running quickly. And if you ever need additional help, Squarespace has got you covered. They offer webinars, a full series of help guides, or you can contact their 24-7 support via live chat and email. If you've already got a third-party domain, you don't have to give it up. Just transfer it over to Squarespace. And they've got tons of great tools to make your life easier, including their e-commerce features that help you sell merch or services online and easily manage your inventory and orders. So go to squarespace.com slash WAN and get 10% off your first purchase. There's another Nintendo Switch. There's another Nintendo Switch, but also there isn't. It's, it's the, the, the same Nintendo Switch, but different. If you buy a Nintendo Switch t- now. Yes. Or uh, Hold on, is it now? No, it's in uh, mid-August. Mid-August. If in mid-August you buy a Nintendo Switch yes. and a past version of you in the present now buys a Nintendo Switch, you will have bought two different Nintendo Switches. Yes, unless you get old stock and the future you gets old stock and then that's a bummer. So you're in mid-August buying a Nintendo Switch. Yep. That Switch happens to have been on the shelf since at least today. Yes. That sucks because the new ones are going to have improved battery life, pretty significantly improved. The current ones that are on shelves right now, they claim battery life of two and a half to six and a half hours, which is a big range, but... It goes up from pretty decent to like... <laughs> Depending on the game yep. and how hot it is, yep. and all sorts of stuff, the new ones are going to have 4.5 to 9 hours. So that's like on the low end of the new switches. The lowest end, according to this claim, yep. is like in the 66th percentile of the old ones. Yeah, so that's pretty good. And you're not going to pay anything more for that. That's just going to be the new standard switch. So the the word on the street, if you hang out on sites that really follow like silicon news closely is that this is because they had to do a like basically they were just doing a new spin because they needed to move to a new process or they needed it for the switch light or something like that like um and since they were doing it anyway they might as well just put it in the full size switch and then they can have better battery life like basically it's a power consumption uh decreasing move that they've done here. It's not a different battery. Yeah, it's not a different battery. They have altered the power consumption of the processor in the Nintendo Switch. So they figured, oh, what the hey, we're doing it anyway. We might as well put it in the Switch. Um, The product model number doesn't even change. This will have better battery life even than the Switch Lite. Yeah. Which has better battery life than the old one. Well, I would think then just for the, because the Switch Lite is small. So I would think for the full-size Switch, they're just putting the same battery as the original one, and it just happens to be a bigger one than the Lite. Yeah, okay. But they would have needed this more power-efficient chip in order to make the Switch Lite 
have a reasonable battery life at all while also being quite a bit smaller. Right. Um, the rumor at this point is that an enhanced version of the Switch targeted at avid gamers is also in production, but Nintendo has not indicated that this is the case as of yet. With that said, based on this new manufacturing process, if they were to produce a more powerful chip and target 2.5 to 6.5 hours of gameplay like the original Switch, maybe they could do a Switch Pro or a Switch... What do you think they would call it? Wow. Are there other uh, Nintendo consoles that have had iterations like, like that? Pro monikers? Have they ever done like a DS Pro? Well, they did lots of different versions. Oh, Advanced with Game Boy and SP. But what about on actual consoles like a 64? Yeah, I mean, they did they, like a Super Nintendo. I mean, that was a long time ago, though. Super Switch? I, I doubt Super it. Super Nintendo wasn't just an iteration. That was a whole new Yeah, and it, but they, like Nintendo's naming for things is so weird because like one time that they have maintained inter-console compatibility was with the Wii and the Wii U. So what, Switch U? But that was Ooh. a complete failure. Yeah, they they'll never, never do that. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't say that anymore. Um, you know, if it was anyone else, you know, I'd be like, Switch GT. Like, that would be a more conventional North American thing to do. Or like a I Switch guess. XT. You know, like, yeah, yeah, put yeah, a yeah. suffix on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't see Nintendo doing that. That's just not really... They should just put another S. The Switch. The double S. S. Okay. I wouldn't put anything past them. I mean, <laughs> they named a console Switch. where you grab a thing like this and wave it around the Wii. Like, I, it's, I've never heard anyone make that association. Really? Yeah. You've never heard no. anyone make the association between the we and a penis? N and saying we, like, together? No. What? No, I've never heard that. No, 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 not, not doing it together. I no, just, but you know, you're saying, I thought you meant we, oh, we, like W-E-E. -E. Yeah. Oh, no, I haven't heard that either. Shut up. Yes, you I'm have. Joking. No, I don't even believe you right now. That's Man, funny. I'm younger than you. That's nuts. I was like 14 when that came out. And, and at I 14, still... you weren't making pee and wiener jokes. No. No, you were above that. You heard it here first, guys. James <laughs> James has matured as, as a human being in a very unusual fashion. Do you see this? He start, Do you see this? He started out with a very, <laughs> very highbrow sense of humor, <laughs> and then he's degraded from there. I'm not allowed children. I only have the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, as a company, like, does Nintendo have to get these old, soon-to-be inferior Switches off the shelves before they can... Like, I... if you buy one before the new one comes out, is there a period of time where you can exchange it, like oh, honoring the sale it. price? So I think the store is just going to end up eating it, and they might send it back to Nintendo, and Nintendo might have some kind of B-stock way to, to dump old inventory out. Like, I'm, I'm sure this, it's not, I mean, if, if there's anything they learned from the Wii U, it's <laughs> don't call something something you and how to get rid of dead stock. So I'm sure they can figure it out. Okay. But yeah, if I was a retailer and I ended up taking back a bunch of crappy battery life switches, I would I'd probably just send them back to Nintendo and be like, look, this is your problem. If you want me to keep carrying your product, I'm not eating these. Um, all right, Neuralink applies to the FDA for human trials. So Neuralink, a company set up by Elon Musk to explore ways to connect the human brain to a computer interface, has applied to U.S. regulators to start trialing its device on humans. Okay, that sounds really clickbaity. So Neuralink is a... You wrote it! I copy-pasted it. It's a brain-machine interface company with the ultimate eventual goal of making an interface that you can connect non-intrusively to the brain so we can, you know, have hard drives for, for memory and, and, and basically Hopefully keep up with the drives. machines. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just this. Keep up Spins with up. the AI that's going to make us their pets. So be a cyborg. But in Elon Musk fashion, he usually shoots for the moon but makes a monetizable path to get there, right? So if he wants to go to Mars, he starts doing, uh, sh he makes his own space shuttle and then brings people just to the ISS and makes money doing that so he can finance the eventual trip to Mars and research all the technology along the way. So what they're doing with Neuralink is the same thing. They're uh, apparently, according to their claims, they've already surpassed the state of the art and they're trying to make these brain machine interfaces that can help people like with Parkinson's and other neurological diseases just not have seizures anymore and stuff like that. And then 
once they continue to do, th to do that, eventually the technology will be good enough that you and I don't need to use a keyboard and mouse anymore. So they showed off um, some of the aspects of their new tech, which is the first device is called the N1. And mostly the talk was a recruitment talk, kind of. It was a conference. Elon wasn't the only one speaking there. It was other people at the team. They showed clips of different people at the team uh, with footage from their lab. Apparently, they have 100 employees. Really? I wow. thought it was like a team of like the 12 best experts in the world, but there's like 100 people there. Wow, okay. And it's super cool. So what it is is basically a small chip, like smaller than the size of your pinky fingernail. And that goes just underneath the skull in like a two millimeter wide incision. It's such a small incision that you don't even need a stitch when, right. the, when it's over. They want the operation to be like getting LASIK eye surgery. Yeah, kind of like that, uh, kind of like installing the chip in uh, uh, Kingsman. Didn't see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a, I think a, you'd like it. Attached to the chip is a bunch of these like probes, uh, but they're they're threads. Okay, they're not like like the the stuff that people buy today, which is super expensive and brutal. It would be like a spike that goes into your brain, and uh, instead they have these threads. They're, they're actually a tenth of the width of a human hair. And they yeah. go in, and each one of them has electrodes in it, and so it can receive signals from multiple neurons, and then all those threads are connected to that chip. That chip then con communicates wirelessly to a wearable that you put on your ear, which in turn is connected via Bluetooth to your smartphone. I must be getting old, because this makes me very uncomfortable. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> and so you can actually wear more than one of these. So Normally, this like the the state of the art yeah. that they used before, like that spike, you would just get one, and it'd be like super invasive and everything. Yeah. With these, because they're less invasive, um, they could put they want to aim for about four, but they could put up to ten in different brain centers around your head, and your hair can just grow back over them, and there's no cords coming from you, so they're, they're super discreet. Yeah. And the thing that's super cool is they made this robot to do the surgery to put it on because those threads are so fine and small, smaller than a human hair. This robot with this tiny, tiny needle and this machine vision, which can detect where your like brain, uh, your arteries are and yeah. veins in your brain where the blood is, yeah. it can avoid those so it doesn't cause hemorrhaging. And it can, it can just insert these threads at different places. And there's like a thousand threads with like 3,000 electrodes each. Oh. And it does it like in an hour. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm super surprised that they apparently have a product that they apparently are going to be trialing on humans by apparently yeah. the end of 2020. They tested it on a monkey that was able to control a computer with its brain, according to Mr. Musk. That's not far-fetched because there's videos of monkeys controlling computers with their brains like 12 years ago. Right, but it just means that their system like does something at the very least. It's not just... Uh you know, a, a Kickstarter. Yeah. You know, like here's a <laughs> here's a really thin thread. We imagine at some point in the future it'll detect neural activity, but for now it's just drilled into your brain. Yeah. Um, I think they have like the foremost experts. They have a lot of young people. A lot of people in that video look like they're under thirty. Interesting. Speaking of uh, a lot of young people, a lot of young people are uh, getting off Facebook. Okay, last one though, because I gotta go. Uh, this is the last one. Oh. Yeah. This is just the, the topics that we you. highlighted at the beginning. Oh. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure we got through those. We're not doing the Samsung RAM thing. Um, all right. So this was posted on the forum by Floofer. Thanks, Floofer. Love US, that name. U.S. regulators have approved a record $5 billion fine on Facebook to settle an investigation into data privacy violations related to allegations that political consultancy Cambridge Analytica improperly obtained the data of up to 87 million Facebook users. The sum amounts to around a quarter of the company's yearly profit. Uh, the investigation focused on whether Facebook had violated a 2011 agreement under which it was required to clearly notify users and gain express consent to share their data. If confirmed, it would be the largest fine ever levied by the FTC on a tech company, uh, but it still needs to be finalized by the Justice Department's civil division, and it's unclear how long this may take. Investors responded positively to the news. Okay, hold on. This is the most interesting part. Yeah. You'd think that the news of being like, hey, you're going to get fined $5 billion would make your stock price go down. But actually, it made it go up 1.8%, which totally makes sense. Because they knew that this fine was coming down the pike for a long time. Yep, they, they didn't, didn't know, know how much, much it was going to be. But Facebook yep. did think that it was going to be in the neighborhood of $5 billion, And Facebook did put, apparently, almost enough almost all that aside. So the reason that the stock price would go up is because now there's less uncertainty. Right. 
Uh, we don't know what additional measures and oversight might be placed on the company or Mark Zuckerberg himself. Um, but I think what everyone wants to know is where does the money go? Like, does everyone who had their information sold get, no. re, re, could get compensated for it? Apparently, in cases like this, it's the people affected don't get compensated. The agency that does the investigation isn't even the one who gets the money. Usually, it just goes to the, the U.S. Treasury for, uh, for general use. So, build a wall. <laughs> it no. just goes into the coffers. Yeah. Um, sure. Do you think that... Some people think that this is not enough money. It's a slap on the wrist. It's not enough to make a dent or make them care. It um, is 20% of a year's profits, not gross revenue, profits. Yeah, so I actually, I have a bit of a different take on that. Um, I think that a fine of 20% of a company's profit for the year is much more than a slap on the wrist. I mean, I think it's very easy for people to say, well, Facebook doesn't care because they're going to make four times that much this year. But... I mean, if I told you that, you know, you did a really bad thing driving that far over the speed limit, I I'm fining you a quarter of your salary for the year, you'd probably be pretty bummed. The, yeah, the other part of it is they have competitors. All of their competitors are, you know, everyone's making as much as they can and allocating as much as they can to the future, to grow more in the future. So if you didn't plan for that 20%, that inhibits your ability to grow as much as you wanted to and then gives your competitors a leg up. And the other thing to remember is that this is just one country that has assessed this 20% of Facebook's global annual profit fine. Mm. There's nothing to say that they won't get hit by, and you know what, this Cambridge Analytica one specifically, maybe not. But there's nothing to say that in the event of some kind of a scandal like this that they won't get hit then by the EU and then by Canada, and then by someone else. And at the end of the day, um, you know, yeah, Facebook is gonna continue to make a lot of money, a ton of money, but I, I don't personally buy that 20% of your annual profit is, um, an, is like a, a, a slap on the wrist. It, if we got, like, okay, if we got fined 20% of our annual profit, I can tell you as a business owner, that would sting. That would affect our budgeting. That would affect our future plans on our expansion, our growth. Um, especially because this is sort of a Pandora's box. Now that I've been fined $5 billion once, I'm certainly at that amount, 20% of my profit, I am certainly trying to figure out how to not get hit by that next year. Mm. So if people are saying, look, this is not a deterrent, I think that's hogwash. You think Facebook wants 20% of their profit wiped out every year? That's not going to help their stock price. I think it's interesting that yeah. give, given that it just goes to the U.S. Treasury for general use, yeah. it almost gives the government an incentive to make these fines go through. That's kind of weird. Yeah, government fines um, are a fascinating thing. I mean, that's another thing too, is like for me as Facebook, I have a lot of uncertainty now. It's like on the one hand, yeah, yeah you guys done goofed, but you know, they've done a lot of other really stupid stuff over the last couple of years too. So I'm kind of sitting there going, oh crap, now that their scent of blood is in the water, what else are they coming after us for and what will the fines be? Like if I'm a Facebook investor, uh, this news does not make me want to spend 1.8% more on my Facebook <laughs> shares, especially because Facebook is such a public target. Mm. Uh, and then again, like I, okay, I have to confess, I haven't been following this that closely. You know, maybe there's something in this settlement that says the FTC isn't going to go after them for anything else. That like I, I don't know exactly. I don't know. I don't know. But it's not confidence inspiring for me and I think it's I think it's sort of ridiculous to think that Facebook would just shrug this one off. Could I agree. Wrong. Could be wrong. Super chats? Yeah, super chat. Oh, good reminder. Thank you. Chris, Nerdy Timber, Jonas Garibay, Freddie, Gary Singh. Mate, what are you doing? <laughs> See you in a week, dude. Is that the gra the uh, graveler? Yeah. Yeah. That's um, part of that. Matt Trinidad. Demon, Gary Singh, Rocky Gregory, poops too much. It's a shame, Gregory. Ethan Lucy, William McKay, Pablo Diaz. Uh, what'd you get, a OnePlus 7 Pro or Pixel 3a XL? Need a headphone jack? Pixel 3a XL, anything else? OnePlus 7 Pro. No? I think, I think I'd get the 7 Pro. 
Really? Well, I mean, it depends if you need a headphone jack. It doesn't have one. Um, Dane Carter, thanks. Uh, LXS, y'all hear about the new Nintendo Switch? Oh, LOL. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We talked about that about later. Uh, Sauce Boss, thanks. Uh, Tommy Gun, I demand that you make Channel Super Fun your game stream channel. Maybe you'll read it this time. Okay, I did. Um, that won't happen, but resurrecting Channel Super Fun is kind of on the table lately, so stay tuned. Hmm. Uh, just Mark Gaming, are you not going to review the Sony Xperia 1? Adrian Finnegan, hi, Michael Hanley, sup? Um, <laughs> Robert, it's RC Mail. Oh, oh, this is, this is. Oh, he's, this is Robert's the here. It's RC, RC Mail. Mail. The H is silent, swap the L and the E, RC Mail. RC Mail, so like RC guy. That helps me. Okay. That helps me, RC, RC Mail. Mail. Robert C. Mail. Midland Productions. I want to follow up when I asked about the Dream Studio. I know you have one. I was referring to if you bought land and built from scratch. Oh! Well, if I bought land and built from scratch, that would be quite a dream, because I don't know if you've looked at land prices in the Lower Mainland any time recently, but it's in the neighborhood of... $9 million from... for a pigeon butt course, baby. Yeah, we That's saw that That's the next today. LTT campus. Yeah, uh, 24 acres in South Surrey, $9 million. We all, all pitch in. We can get it. <laughs> Send some uh, super all, chats, guys. We need your super chats. We'll buy yeah. 24 acres. We all pitch in and putt. <laughs> ah! That was the joke, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nick. I'm non dad here, and I have the best dad jokes. Yeah, I made that. <laughs> DistroTube, uh, have you considered switching to Linux? Um, yes, I've considered it, but I, there's a lot of software I need to use. His name is DistroTube. Runs on uh, Windows. <laughs> uh, Frederick, would you op be open to making more pro content? Uh, probably not that much you know we we love being that sort of you know fun window into really high-end pro cool stuff sometimes but it's not really our focus um eduardo linus it's been a good run you're gonna get susaned uh i don't know Ma i know what that is and Ma you're maybe, right maybe she's uh maybe she's personally making sure that our stream doesn't stop buffering Wait, are we talking about that susan or a different susan i assume yeah okay uh, okay, I gotta. I can only have time for a couple more. What if those five million dollars was ransom money for some kidnappers? So after you took it, they never found them and killed the kid. Well, that's why I would check the news, because I'm sure that would show up in the news. See, I've got that covered. Um, and you'd be like, "Here's the four million dollars, guys. Save the kid." And like you'd be rushed by like waiting police if. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, Drake Simmons says, "Dang it! Now I have to buy a second water bottle." The stealth one is sweet. It is sweet. I don't mind, but I am bummed that I already bought the black hat. Can I get a virtual hug? Yes. Yes. You need two hats, man. Yeah. You need one that you wear to the gym and like when you're hay baling and stuff, and then you need a good dress hat. Dress hat, yep. And when you get new shoes and stuff, it's like sharp. It's black, it's sharp. So guys, just a reminder, if you add the stealth hoodie, the stealth version of the LTT water bottle, and the black hat all to your cart on ltdstore.com, you will get an automatic $20 discount applied, which is basically like getting a free hat. Yeah, and the only thing that was as popular as this water bottle so far in the first hour was the first water bottle. The first water so, bottle, okay. People love just water. Really quickly, you people need oh, water. Oh, these doing really well? Yeah. Oh, cool. They're selling well, you should get I one. mean, we, I guess we one. knew that. Like, black on black, <laughs> can yeah. never, you can never lose. Thanks for wounding with us, guys. All right. So thanks, guys, and we will see you again next week. Say, oh, no, we will see you again next week at a, at a different time. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday. We're going to be streaming from LTX. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be one of the panels. All right, see you there, guys. All right, sorry, James, you can go. Uh, well, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want to play some games. I'm down. I got to call my friend. Who's supposed to be to protect minors featured on, in your content, some videos on your channel may have content disabled. What are you guys talking about? Well, which ones? This is just like a new message in the uh, in the creator studio. Like, did everybody see that, or just us? I don't know. It's so weird.